there are certain lines we didn't use to cross in media. And one of them was bringing somebody's children into our coverage, especially in the political realm. And we've seen some blowback to it. They tried to do it to Barron Trump. And there was enough pushback that the media did back off of Barron Trump. But Claudia, your daughter, she's one of your oldest uh, boy, girl, twin set. Um, she started tweeting and doing some TikToks and so on. And that's fine. That is what every teenage girl does. I mean, like they're all 15 year old girls are all on TikTok sending out pictures of themselves. That's what they do. But that was not um, a private matter, according to Taylor Lorenz who I really think is emerging in story after story as a villain. She's just a villain who doesn't care about destroying people's lives. And it doesn't matter how young or how private uh, or how unwilling they are to put themselves into the public eye. And TikTok for a 15-year-old girl is not the same as the public eye. That is not the same as willingly being all over the pages of the New York Times or the Washington Post. That's not. And any reporter worth her salt would understand that if you are going to loop that girl in, to a story and write about her or out the TikToks, et cetera, the parents must be involved. Okay. So please tell us what actually happened with this Taylor Lorenz, who was writing for the New York Times. Now she's with the Washington Post and your daughter and her TikToks. And Taylor Lorenz is somebody who says she doesn't want people to know her name, where she lives. She's so upset. She's crying on national TV, Megan, because people are talking to this now 38 year old woman about her predatory behavior on not just my child, but other people's children and uh, calling this business leader a racist and uh, on social media and showing up at this teenager's house and promising them stuff. So there she is, Taylor Lorenz. So what happened is very simple. My daughter was doing what teenagers do. She was uh, photographing herself and her friends on TikTok and she was pushing back on authority, including mom and dad. She was expressing her political views, which of course I... I raise all four of my children, George, Claudia, Charlotte, and Vanessa, to be independent thinkers, to make their own way, to probe and to discuss and to discern and suss it all out. And then Taylor Lorenz thought she saw, she saw George in the back of one of the TikToks and realized who Claudia Conway was and immediately told her then 200,000 followers on Twitter, did a whole string of Claudia's anti-Trump TikToks, which because it's the New York Times allowed basically every other media outlet to do the same. Yeah. Very few of them just stopped, Megan, in that ferocious moment and said, hold on, is this news? Is this right? Is this appropriate? Let me go back and see. Are George and, Cla- are George and Kellyanne mentioned in this article as having said this is OK or giving a comment? George Conway and Kellyanne Conway are fairly easy to reach people. Yeah. And the fact that Lorenz and none of her editors at The New York Times did that and the fact that when I called and emailed them from my official White House account, so it'll be in the archives one day. Um, they were so flip. They were so insensitive and so flip. I said, this person should, she said, oh, Taylor would love to talk to you and Claudia more about your family. My goodness. So George, it's not why I'm calling. he got involved also. Well, that guy no longer has a job. She's now moved on. But, but people should know that because of where I worked, because of how I vote, People thought it was okay to do something that is not okay. Megan, a 15-year-old, cannot vote, cannot drive, cannot go to an R-rated movie. I don't think you can get the ears pierced without a parent's permission. Can't do any number of things that adults can do. But yet you have adults, a 35-year-old adult woman, contacting Claudia and, and promising her what every teenager wants, fame, fortune, likes, followers, right. attention, interviews. And I have a lot of those direct messages because Claudia has shared them with me. And I will not forgive or forget the adults who did that can, to my can daughter. You tell way, us, Claudia, can you tell the audience what, what Taylor Lorenz said about how she and she and Claudia are basically equals? That they're mutuals. That it was fine that they were talking because they're mutuals. They're peers. <laughs> hey, Chickadee. Your 35-year-old grown woman, I mean, she's like a Peter Pan. She said she loves Twitter because she can just quote, she posted a tweet from bed and said, I love Twitter because I can just post shit from my bed all day and then did. She doesn't have children of her own, which would be fine, except she's picking on other people's children. Mm -hmm. She's a 35-year-old person who said it's fine because Claudia and I are mutuals on social media, which means they follow each other. That's weird. We're peers. And then this is the kicker, and the New York Times editors agreed with this until they were afraid and pulled back, Megan. They said, you know, Taylor told Claudia, if at any time Claudia felt uncomfortable, Claudia should give her parents Taylor's number. 
what? That's the standard now? By the way, Megan, are there standards? Are there standards in media for contacting minors? I have asked this question again and again. Somebody told me very recently at there at ABC, there are somebody told me, and in other words, people gave me, I've been asking around, are there standards? Because there need to be. You can, I mean, and listen, me, I can only speak to my own experience, but at, at Fox and NBC, you could never put a minor on the air without getting permission from the parent. You just, you can't do a story about a minor and, and take pictures of them and use their personal information without getting permission from the parent. You know, the New York Times said, well, Claudia is famous. She's a public figure. You just made her that way, you jerks. Yeah, she you wasn't can. before you did that. So right. you made it and then said, this is fine. So I got to say, I give my daughter, Claudia, a thousand, a thousand barrels of credit, Megan, because, you know, once you get that fame and fortune and attention and likes and all, it's very tough to give it up. And I have a message, too, to my former friends who have teenage girls who were Claudia's friends. Um, they were I think they were very jealous of Claudia. Because some of them are in marketing, could never get that many likes and attention. But you know what? It was a sick way that it happened. But my message is Claudia overcame all that. She had more, she has more class, dignity, judgment, and discretion as there were three siblings in her pinky than these adults who were coming upon her like gargoyles. Yes, exploiting her. Exploiting, exploiting her. her. You and write about that in the book, that, that need, the need. For- like she's, a she's a teenager, she's a child. Of course. And, and, her need for likes and follows and retweets and all that is very human, but especially exploitable, expe- especially exploitable for a teenage girl, which Taylor Lorenz 100 percent understands. And the New York Times 100 percent understands. And instead of giving two shits about her, they exploited her. They created a severe problem. Uh, for her and her life and even within your family walls. And then they sat back and tried to feast on the spoils, Kellyanne. They they enjoyed every phase of it. And when you and Taylor had, I'm sorry, when you and um, and Claudia had some tumult as a result of some of this, because we saw it, she tweeted it out, whatever. They loved that too. They they dined on on that upset in your family like vultures. And I know who they were. By the way, there are a lot of adults who still fo- follow Claudia on Twitter. You're weird. What are you hoping she'll reveal to you? Exactly. Right. What are you hoping she'll reveal to you? You who are old enough to be her mother, some of them grandmother. Uh, and and that, that's the thing. Was they, they thought that Claudia was some kind of love child between like Greta Thunberg and Deep Throat. She's my child. <laughs> she's a child and she's my child. And I have to tell you, Megan, the whole story of my father leaving us with no child support, no alimony, me meeting him when I was 12 and having a full, present, loving relationship with him for 40 years until he passed away until I was 52. God rest his soul. I talk a lot about second chances and redemption and mercy and forgiveness that if you're someone who seeks it, you ought to be someone who also gives it when being asked. And I have to tell you on this one, I feel no mercy. I feel I don't feel an ounce of forgiveness to these predatory adults who all knew better. I mean, look at what the late night comedians, I, should we be calling them comedians? Right. I don't think most of them are funny. Activists. Look at what they were doing. And then if something happens when their children, oh, please, my child, or oh, my children, oh, my children are off limits. I'm sorry. We have to have standards. And you know what I like to say in the book? We, you and I know a lot of these things, not because somebody taught us or told us. If you've been raised by a woman and not a wolf, people, you know what's right and what's wrong. And it has to apply evenly. But I'm very proud of Claudia because she's objectively brilliant and beautiful. And she's got so much going on that these predatory adults, these troubled, thin-skinned, terrified nobodies living in glass houses will never have going on what Claudia Conway has going on. Take a moment and think of the best burger you've ever had. Picture it fondly. Imagine that first mouth-watering bite and then throw it in the trash. Why? because you're about to have a new favorite burger. I'm talking about the American Wagyu Burgers from Good Ranchers. The only thing that can make them better is that you get two pounds of them free with my code, Megan. You have a problem. I have a problem. We all have a problem, and it's a meat problem. The problem is that 85% of the grass-fed beef in stores and online is imported from overseas. Don't pay a premium for low-quality foreign meat. Good Ranchers sells 100% American meat and delivers it to your door for a great price. Good Ranchers helps solve your meat problem with free shipping. Go to GoodRanchers.com slash Megan now. Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. And if you don't buy the meat in your house, tell the person who does to check out Good Ranchers. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.